Hello and welcome to this tutorial. I assume you're watching this because you are learning Cheat Engine or you're just trying to get a refresher course. Uh, either way, I believe this will be beneficial to you as that is the intent of these videos. Um, I do just want to make it clear that if you are a beginner, you cannot use Cheat Engine to hack online games. You can't modify the amount of money you have. You can't uh, modify the amount of skill points you have. Anything that is not client-sided, you cannot hack with Cheat Engine quote quote all right so the easiest way to learn cheat engine is just by going through the tutorial uh, you can access the tutorial by clicking on the help menu and then you can choose either the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version and i'm going to choose the 32-bit version since not everybody has a 64-bit operating system um, I would recommend reading through uh, each one of these screens to understand the process, but for the sake of this tutorial, uh, I will be instructing you on what to do. So the first screen here is essentially just showing you how to attach Cheat Engine to the application. And to do that, you simply click on the little icon here on the top left hand side and choose the tutorial and then open that process from the process list. All right, so now Cheat Engine is attached to this process. Any addresses that you search for or values that you search for will only come from the tutorial. Okay, so on the next screen, we are simulating our health down here. And essentially, um, the goal is to find the value and the address of our health and change it to 1000. Now, typically, if you're in a real game, especially a modern game, you're not going to have an easy health value like 100 or 0 to 100. Uh, but you can use the same uh, methodology here to find ammo and things like that. So initially, what we want to do is search for the value of 100. And before we get started in that, I want to talk to a couple things over here. If we know exactly what value we're looking for we can put in that exact value or if we know whether it's larger or smaller than a value we can search that to narrow down those results if we know if it's a value between two numbers we can do that and if we have no idea then we can just search for an unknown initial value for our data types uh, you typically won't be using binary if you are looking for uh, a flag, whether a zero means yes or no, and a one means yes or no, um, you can search on a byte. Uh, two bytes you would typically use if you're using maybe like an emulator, an NES emulator, something like that. Uh, typically your default search type will be four bytes. Uh, this allocates uh, or covers a range of uh, values pretty much going to cover anything that you search that is a whole number. Eight bytes you're typically not going to use. Uh, float is a 32-bit data type that will typically be your best friend when you're searching for things like your health or your stamina inside of a game. Uh, double is a 64-bit data type, which you probably won't use too awful much. Uh, most game designers and game engines are still using float values for things like health. Uh, the difference between a float and a double and then like a 4-byte value, 4 bytes you can only search for whole numbers like 100, whereas float and double you can search for decimals like 99.3, something like that. Okay, so for the sake of simplicity and this tutorial, we're just going to search for the number 100 on four bytes. And I apologize if that was a little bit wordy, but it's something that you will be interested in at, at least some point in time. Uh, so when we click, uh, when we search for the value 100, we can see over here on the left hand side, we have some addresses. Now these green addresses over here means that they're static and they won't change. Uh, that doesn't necessarily have an impact on this particular uh, search, but uh, just kind of an FYI on that. Okay, so if we go in and hit the hit me button, our value is going to change to 97. Now I can see over here we've got this red value that has changed to 97, and this is the current value, and then the previous value is over on the right hand side. Now if I scroll down, that's the only value that's changed, so I know that's my address, but just for the sake of this tutorial, let me go ahead and search for 97. And narrow that list down to one all right so from here i can either double click on this address or i can click this little red arrow down here to move it down to this section of the window now this is where we can modify the value of our address we can give it a description or a name and we can also freeze that address if we like now for the sake of this uh, step we need to change it to 1000 so i can just double click and change this value 
to 1000 and we can see the next button lights up. So before we move on, I want to talk to you a little bit about this. Now our health still says that it's 97 and the reason that is is because nothing's actually triggered it to modify this address. Okay, however, if I hit hit me, it's going to subtract a number from 1000, which it looks like it only subtracted one. So it's not going to show 1000. Even if we freeze this address, it's going to move it down a little bit and then move it back up to 1000. So that's why it shows 999. All right, so moving on to step three, uh, this time we have one of these standard Windows progress bars, and if we click the Hit Me button, we can see that that decreases. Now the tutorial tells us that this value is somewhere between zero and 500, and if we do a new scan, we could do a value between, but most of the time in games, you're not gonna have any idea what that value really is. So for the sake of that, we're going to do an unknown initial value and click on first scan. So right away, we get over 4 million results that we cannot use. So what we need to do is narrow that down a little bit. If I click on hit me again, we can see that that's gone down. I'm going to search for a decreased value. And immediately we're already down to 1,419 addresses. Uh, if I go ahead and hit hit me again, we can see it's decreased by four. So this time I'm going to search decreased value by four. And then that gives us these addresses here. Now we know that the value is somewhere between zero and 500, which knocks these addresses out. So that means my address is right here. All right, let me go ahead and hit me one more time. No reference to Britney Spears. Um, and then we can see that that has gone down. So that's definitely our address. And our mission is to change this to 5,000. Let's go ahead and do that. And we can see that the next button has lit up. Okay. So like I said before, most of the time your health or your stamina or uh, something that has to do with some sort of like a progress bar is typically going to be a float value because there are decimals involved. And we can see if I hit me, my value is now 95.86. Let's do a new scan. We're going to change the value type to a float and we're going to choose 95.86. You see, that's the only value that I, or the only result that I get. So I know that that's my address. Let me go ahead and double click on that. And what are we trying to do on this one? Our assignment is to change this to 5,000. So let me go ahead and do that. And then the same thing on a double, like most of the time, uh, you're not gonna have doubles, but for the sake of the tutorial, we'll go and search it anyway. We'll search 100. Now doubles, since most games don't really use a lot of double data types because they take up so much uh, memory, uh, you're not going to have very many results. And in this case, we only have one result. So this is our value. Let's go ahead and click 5,000 on this. And we can see that the next button has lit up. Okay, so for step five, let's just go ahead and erase everything that we've got here. Um, let's see what we're trying to do on this one. Essentially, what we're trying to do is keep this value from changing at all. Now you can see each time I click the button, it's giving me a random value. Let's go ahead and do a new scan. I'm going to change this back to four bytes and I'm going to search for 440 and click again. And now we have 833. So here's my address right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to find what writes to this address because something is changing this address to 833. 833 is uh, the value of this address, but something else is making this address show this number. And we're trying to find out what that is and make it stop. Because typically if this was your ammo, each time you click the button, your ammo is gonna go down. We want it not to do anything at all. So if we click change value again, this window here is essentially a listener and it's gonna look for any instructions that happen. Okay, so what happened right here is the value of EDX, whatever that value may be, got moved into the EAX register. Now, if I look at EDX down here, if I scroll down, I can see that 10E is the value that is being moved in EAX. Now, this is a hexadecimal value. If I do a new scan and I click this hex button here and I put in 10E, 
and then I take the hex off that's going to convert it into a decimal form. Well, that's 270. Now I've lost my address. I may have to go back and find it, but we can see right here that the value is 270. Okay. Now there are two ways to do this. Now the tutorial simply says click on replace, which means replace this code with a code that does nothing. And all you have to do is click OK here and it will do that. But I prefer not to do that. And here's why. If I want to go back to the original code, I can't do that from here. But if I open this disassembler and I right click, replace with code that does nothing, all I have to do is hit OK. Now I can see if I click this button, I can click it all day long. That value never changes. My ammo never goes down. My health doesn't go down or whatever this address uh, is tied to. It doesn't do anything. And if I want to change it back, all I have to do is restore with original code. And now that value will change again. Now, since I already knocked out that, and you may have shown or saw that it says NOP, uh, typically when we have a NOP value or we NOP an address, that means we just get rid of it and we're just canceling out. Uh, those addresses are still reserved. We're just not doing anything with them. All right, so let's go ahead and click next. And then for the sake of uh, time, this will be the last step that I cover in this particular video. Uh, in this step, they're asking us to uh, find a pointer. Uh, pointers can be a little bit more difficult, um, but I'll go ahead and cover it in this video. In step eight, we get into multi-level pointers and we'll start dealing with offsets and things like that. Um, oftentimes, um, each time you start a game the address to a particular thing like your ammo uh, will change and you'll have to find out uh, that address all over again each time that you log in the idea is to create a cheat table that you can just load each time that way you don't have to find all these addresses and freeze them and, and all this other stuff every time you play the game uh, one way to do that is by finding the pointer so for instance if I search for uh, 100 and I do a change value, we can see right here, 683, okay? If I click on this and I click on the change, change pointer, well, my new value is 209, but it doesn't show here. That's because this address is no longer used. It's something else now. So each time I load this trainer or this tutorial, this is going to be different, okay? And we have to find the pointer that points to this address that way we always have access to it. All right, so let me go ahead and get rid of this address since it means nothing to us anymore. And we're gonna do a new search for 209. All right, let's go and change that value. So 241, here's our 241. We're gonna right click on this address and find out what accesses this address. Now you may get a little window that pops up that asks you to attach the debugger to the process. Go ahead and do that. And we have this listener window up once again, kind of like what we had with the other one, only now we're finding out what accesses this address. Go ahead and click change value again. And we can see that these addresses have been affected. Now, if a uh, if one of these registers is within brackets, that means this is the number that we're going to use. Now I know that under EAX, we're not going to use this value. We want the one in front to be used. So this right here, the EDX, you may have an offset in here, which would be EDX plus one C or something like that. Uh, I'll show you how to do that as well. But for this one, we don't have any offsets. So if we double click on this, we can see that the value of the pointer needed to find this address is probably, and then it's actually going to show the address for EDX, all right, which is this address right here. What we're going to do is we're going to do a new scan, and we're going to click on the hex uh, button right here, and we're going to type in that address, 17B4430, and we're going to look for the green address because, like I said, the green address is a static address. And we're going to add that address manually. We're going to click pointer and we'll type this in. So 5FC630, which I'm grabbing from right here. And we can see that that value equals 556, which is our value. All right, so if I change this to, I believe it's 5,000 it's asking me to do. We're going to freeze that value and we're going to change the pointer and see what happens. Our next button lights up okay now if I unfreeze this 
you can see after I've changed the pointer my value is still updating with the address we'll do it again so now we have a new pointer and my value still updating okay so that's how pointers work a very basic level of pointers and like I said I'll have a dedicated video for step 8 which talks about multi-level pointers where we'll dive into different offsets and finding different addresses so I hope this video has been helpful for you if you have any questions please leave a comment below and I will see if I can help you out with that um, and stay tuned for the next video